Hey, Facebook friends, a little vertical hope today from Faith Builders Ministries found straight in Isaiah 6, where he, where he overhears the people speaking and the Lord's wanting to send someone. And Isaiah says, here I am, Lord, here I am, send me. Yay. Listen, this is how I feel about that. That's, that's my heart's desire. I relate to Isaiah in this. And, uh, he had to go through some cleansing process to, for God to actually send him coals to, hot coals to his lips and, and cleanse him. But God eventually did use him. And I went through some cleansing process, still going through a cleansing process, you know, but God is using me. And that's my heart's desire is here I am, Lord, send me. I have a friend that used to pray this, uh, send Michelle. Here she is, Lord, send Michelle. <laughs> She's willing, she'll go. Um, but on a serious note, I was uh, teaching a Bible study at our church in Church of the Harvest, and it was called Remembering the Forgotten God by Francis Chan. And it was all about teaching about the Holy Spirit and how to be led by him. Our last class, I really prayed and sought God for, and we decide, I decided that we were going to go to the local, one of the local hospitals and just be led by the Spirit and pray over people. We would go up to the ICU waiting room and just start praying, just ask people if we can pray. Some people took off to different floors and went just led by the Spirit and just went into rooms and started praying for, for, one, for the sick and it's just it was a just an awesome experience and when we were leaving there after we had prayed and felt led it, it was time to go I remember telling them, listen, I just really want to feed the hungry. I just, let's just be led and let's just go to the park and feed the hungry. So we stopped off at McDonald's and got like, I don't know, 10 hamburgers, cheeseburgers. And we went to the park. There was just no one to be found <laughs> in the park. That I mean, there was a couple, but they were clearly not hungry. And we certainly didn't want to insult them <laughs> by going up and saying, you know, here's a hamburger. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, I said, you know what, ladies, I'll find people. There is plenty of people in my neck of the woods that are hungry. I will feed them on my way home. I'll stop and give the hungry the, the hamburgers. And so we all departed and went home. And I was riding on my way home in my car. And I was just praising God and singing and with all my heart. And I just kept saying over and over, God, here I am. Just use me, Lord. Just use me, Lord. And I just kept praying that. And all of a sudden, I seen a, uh, a motorcycle went flying by me. And he had this little red bandana on. He got, I don't know, half a mile ahead of me. And I seen that bandana fly off his head. So I, I thought, you know what? If I see him break, I'll stop and I'll get it and give it to him. But I didn't see him break. So I thought, okay, well, he, he knew it flew off. It didn't mean that much. So I just kept going. And I approached this hill and I went up this hill. And when I came down the hill, um, there was my motorcycle man. And what happened is a truck had pulled out, a red truck had pulled out, and he had T-boned it with his, uh, with the, on the motorcycle. And he had flipped over the truck, and he was laying on the other side. I mean, I sped up. I got up on the side of the road. I threw it in park, and I ran to a side. And all these people were standing around, but there was no one around him. This other lady was sitting in front of her truck saying, Oh, my gosh, I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to. And I'm like, Are you okay? She goes, She came out of nowhere. I said, Are you okay? She goes, Yes, I'm fine. And she was clearly shaken up, but I believe the man on the other side needed some attention. And so everybody's on their cell phones and they said they, they've called the, you know, police and the ambulance and people are on their way, but nobody was by, by this man. So I bent down and, uh, and I put my hand on the, on his back and I was just rubbing his back and I was just saying, Oh Jesus, Oh Jesus, Oh Jesus. And I was just praying over him and I could see there was some damage done, some, some, devastating damage done and and I just kept praying oh Jesus oh Jesus oh Jesus and I remember um a few minutes later it seemed like eternity but probably three minutes four minutes maybe five a lady had come and tapped me on the shoulder and she says I'm a nurse and um, what can I do and I said well I'm just praying she goes well the ambulance are going to be here you know and I could hear the sirens she goes just back up over here with me and so I was standing on the sidelines in the road and I was just still praying and praying and and uh and she and she could see I was clearly upset and she said, Well, do you want me to go check on him? I said, Yes, would you please? And so she went over there and she came back. I go, Why aren't the helicopters here? What is everybody doing? Why are we standing still here? And uh she just kind of looked at me 
and she shook her head and she goes, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, he didn't, he's not, he didn't make it. And I mean, I started, I was screaming and crying. Um, I was just devastated, devastated. And so I was standing there on the side of the road and I remember the Lord saying this, he said this, he says, Michelle, sometimes I'm going to send you to the hungry and you're going to feed them. And sometimes I'm going to send you to the hurting and you're going to pray over them. And sometimes I'm going to feed, uh, send you to the people that are sick and they are going to be healed. But there's going to be some time, Michelle, I'm going to send you to a dying person on the side of the road. And are, well, are you willing to do that? And I said, here I am, Lord, here I am. Um, I still cry. This has been years. I still cry because I knew that he was somebody's dad and somebody's husband and possibly somebody's grandfather and certainly somebody's son. And it was just heartbreaking. And so I get in my car and I'm just screaming out. I call a friend and I'm crying and, and I, and I go on to, uh, tell this, uh, another friend, I, I tell her all about it and I'm crying and she says, Michelle, I'll pray. I said, okay, and I get home, and I, I tell my husband and my kids, and I just can't get the vision out of my head, and I'm just so hurting for his family, and I didn't, it really bothered me. I didn't get to say the celebration prayer with him. He just was in no position to even speak, and and uh, I was just just hurt, just hurting for, for so many reasons, and so I, my friend that said she was praying all night, I said, go ahead, I said, go, uh, thank you, and you know, and I and the next morning, I get up, and my daughter says, you know, I'm clearly swollen-eyed and crying and still devastated from the night's event. And uh, she says, Mama, it's going to be okay. She goes, you remember the thief on the on the cross in between Jesus, you know? I said, well, Whitney, I didn't get to pray the salvation prayer with him. I just don't know. And she says, well, remember the thief on the cross with Jesus, you know? He didn't get to say it either, but he says, I want to be with you, Jesus. And Jesus says, then you're there. <laughs> then you're there, then you're going, y'all meet you in heaven, and uh, I said, that's wise, Whitney, thank you, and a few minutes later, my phone rang, and it was my friend, Lori Jonas, and she says this, she says, Michelle, I was up praying all night, and this is what I felt like the Lord wanted you to, to know, and this is what he told me, he wanted me to remind you the thief on the cross, and I just started bawling because my daughter had just told me that. They hadn't talked. My friend had been up all night praying, and that's what the Lord gave um, her to give me. And I just want to say this. We don't always know how God's going to use us when we say, here I am. We just we might not get to just go pass out a, a, a cute little cheeseburger to a homeless man on the side of the road or woman or whoever. And you may not just get to go lay hands on somebody at the hospital or pray for somebody silently in your room. Not that those times aren't important. They are. But when you say, here I am, Lord, what you're really saying, or at least what I was saying is, here I am, no matter what, Lord, here I am, use me. And on that night, he did. And I was so curious about who that was that I went to the, the, the news and the, the computer and started looking it up. And I, he, I found out he... He had a name, and he was a father, and he owned Fritz Meat Company in Olathe, and he had a wife, and me and my husband ended up going to the funeral, and I ended up meeting with the family at Starbucks and, and just reassuring them of his last moments were not alone, and I just wanted to encourage you today to say that prayer, but don't put limits on that. Don't put limits of where God will lead you, and since then, I have also, re I also went uh, and was beside another woman that ended up dying uh, on also and was able to talk to her husband and comfort him somewhat too. And they were only a few months apart. So the vertical hope for you today, <laughs> thank you for letting me share, share my emotional story with you. The vertical hope for you today is that you have the ability to be a life changer and to impart um, encouragement and hope in others' lives, no matter what that might look like. You know, the ironic thing is, is I did get to feed the hungry that night. I just didn't get to pass out those cheeseburgers, but I got to feed the hungry. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.